Welcome to Ultimate Deadpool Studios, the show where I, Ultimate Deadpool, talk about random crap and show you guys weird props that I make or buy, and just random shit in general. So, without further ado, let us get into the video. Hey guys, Ultimate Deadpool here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that intro. Um... Anyway, without further ado, um, I got this in the mail today, and I don't remember ordering it, but I'm happy that it came in. Um, if I swear to God, I don't remember ordering this. That doesn't mean that I didn't. That doesn't mean that I did. So, uh, maybe somebody sent it to me. I don't know. It's the Jada Diecast Dime Machine from Back to the Future, and uh, I have to say it's not bad. But it's not great either. You know, we'll, we'll get to that later on. This is actually my second time filming this video. Um, so some of the good things about it is is it is Jada Diecast, which is known for making really good quality diecast cars. Um, I have tons of their work. I've got the Knight Rider car. I've got car from Knight Rider. I've got the Freddy Krueger Cadillac. Um, I have uh, the Christine car. I've got so many. Um, and I'm not done yet. Right, I'm done for now, but not done entirely. Um, and this is honestly both a great thing and slightly disappointing. And the reason why I say that is because I'm a huge Back to the Future fan. I have been for years. Literally, since I learned the words Back to the Future, I've always loved the movie. And this has a great tribute to the movie. There are only a handful of problems that I see with this car. We'll get to those in just a moment. So if you guys don't want to watch me bitch about the car, just fast forward to the end of this video. And when I start saying, or fast forward about halfway to this through this video, and uh, I start talking about good things about the car. So, the bad things start now. Okay, the first thing is none of the diecast cars that I find of the Time Machine have the number one thing that makes a DeLorean a DeLorean. The window on the DeLorean is, you know, a regular sized window. The actual window that goes down is this big. That's why they were never mass produced. It's because they're this big. Instead, the diecast cars always have this humongous glass window, and that's not accurate. And again, I'm a professionalist. It has to look perfect. So this is all just my problems, okay? This is just my problems. So that is the biggest thing on a DeLorean. That's what made it a weird, unique car, aside from it being stainless steel, because that's not actual paint. Second of all, the front... The front headlight cover and the back taillight covers are a very light gunmetal dark gray. These are pure silver. So there's a slight head hiccup. There's no GMC on the front grill panel here. And DeLorean is written on the back of the bumper. So, again, nitpick details. I'm a perfectionist. I have to be. <laughs> that's just how I am. I am a perfectionist. If it's not perfect, I don't... I'm not, I don't say I don't like it, but it's not my preferred thing, you know? Like, if it doesn't if it doesn't look perfect, I still use it, but I still have to complain about it, you know? So, <laughs> um, one thing I do like, and I actually have a different version of the Time Machine. Now, this one is a lot smaller than the other one. Just compare the sizes. This one's smaller. I've had this one for about 13 years. And I'll be 19 in two days. So, uh, this one has a much bigger canvas, so to say, for adding detail. But yet, that smaller one has a lot more detail than this one does. For instance, compare the back panels. This one has a lot more detail than this one does. 
for instance, the red stripes. So the gray interior or gray part on the bottom. This panel fuse box type thing. And then the, the fluctuators on the sides. And then this is actually a Lego piece glued on for Mr. Fusion. My brother accidentally broke it off and I didn't have it. Or I couldn't find it so we just used a Lego piece to fix it. But the original Mr. Fusion that was on it looked just like this. So that's the, the same. Another thing. The dashboard is by far one of the most famous parts of the time machine. You know, you got all the wires hanging out everywhere. You got the flux capacitor. And then you have the time circuits. These are just stickers, okay? Again, I can't stress this enough. On a smaller canvas, they were able to get so much more detail on the inside. On this one, they actually gave it the decency to try to mold the flux capacitor. This one, all I did was put the spark wires on the flux capacitor. No paint, no stickers, just... You can't see it on camera, but if you could, it's just like three spark plug wires on a blank surface. Without the flux capacitor, there's no time machine. This one at least has the decency to mold in the flux capacitor. They didn't paint it, but... I can overlook that. They at least gave it a shot to mold it. They didn't mold it with this one. Again, this is all nitpicky detail bullshit. And then... This one's actually at, uh, missing a, the front windshield. Again, my brother broke it off. Because um, for some reason, I let him play with this. And it was a big mistake. Um, then, then Look at the side panels. This one has the silver trims on it, and this one doesn't. So, again, nitpick. Um, one thing I will say that this one can do that this one can't is this one doesn't have the folding in wheels. This one, the tires do actually fold in, uh, which I really do like. If I wanted to put this as a display piece, I could build, like, a clear uh, stand for it, and it could actually look like it's kind of flying um, or something just like in the movie. Um... And then another thing that this thing has that that one doesn't is if you push the lightning bolt button, the lights can turn on, which is a really cool addition to this. And that's the thing I like about Jada. If it light, if it's supposed to light up, they make it light up. And it's, unless if it's headlights, if it's headlights, they don't do it. But this, if it has a light up feature, they make it work. And they probably just use crappy watch batteries. But they work. Kit and car both have the scanners on the front of the car. They make it work. Granted, it only lasts about 10 seconds. And I know this because filming the Optimus Prime versus Kit video, I had to open the door about 300,000 times because the lights would turn off. And I had to like stop the pictures before it took a picture of... A blank spot on the bumper so that's why I spent so much time and so much extra effort on that one video was it stupid yes was it absolutely worth it in the end personally I think so you guys let me know so another thing that they don't and neither one of the cars have it Sid I don't remember what that actually stands for in the movie but in the back behind the passenger seat there's an LED wall and there's green and orange lights. A picture should have, should be appearing of it right here. When Marty is driving the time machine and he's going up to 88 miles per hour, that SID lights up all the way once it hits 88 miles per hour. Neither one of these cars have that. Which, you know, again, is nitpick detail. But if that doesn't actually show up, it's because my editor sucks. Um, spoiler alert, I'm the editor. So, I suck. So... That's only if it doesn't show up. If it does show up, then it means I wasn't lazy. So, <laughs> um, but I mean, there, there's just so much detail missing out of the interior of the car. And I understand, you know, it's a nightmare to try to do the interior. But here's the thing. You paint the interior before you put the shell on. 
I build model cars for fun and pretty soon to be a living. Not a living, but to make some extra money. And you always want to make sure that your interior is nice and pretty and very detailed before you put the final touch on. This one does not have that. Kit, you know, the, the, the only thing that's really fancy about Kit is in the front of the dashboard. And it's the actual dashboard itself. And they do leave out the voice box and everything and some of the small, the small stuff. But you can't really get that with any, th with any kind of brush. You know, you can't really get that level of detail. But you can get it with a sticker. Again, small nitpicky deals. But Kit doesn't have a detailed back you know, back seat or back seat like the DeLorean does. So, I mean, now I have built a model car of the time machine and I make sure every detail is there. They didn't do that. That's fine. But, <laughs> needless to say, there's quite a bit of detail missing on this much larger vehicle than there is on the other one. So, I don't know what Jada was going for when they made that, but or when they did this, but somebody screwed up somewhere because there's tons of detail missing on this much larger version of the car than there is on the smaller version. I think that one's actually 124 scale, and this is actually one or 122 scale. This one's 124 scale. I don't remember what the scales are, but I think they're both virtually the same scale, even though this one's a little bit bigger. But that's just because they had to make room for the batteries. But, either way... Both cars are still very, you know, very detailed in their own way. This one's got the working lights, the folding in tires. That one just has the doors open. And another thing is the hood of a DeLorean opens forward just like a, you know, a 90s Corvette, you know, a 90 to 83 Corvette. The front of the hood opens up just like a Corvette. This, neither one of them do it. So, I don't know why they did that for, you know, Kit, Car, you know, even even Freddy Krueger's freaking Cadillac from the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie has the hood, the trunk, and the doors open, and only these two have the doors open. Even Ecto-1 has the, the freaking hood and the, you know, the rear hatch open. You never even see the hood of or the engine of Ecto One, except when Ray is working on it in that one shot, and you don't even see anything. You're just seeing him going like tinkering with a little cigarette in his mouth, and then you don't even see Kit's engine in the show that I'm aware of. I'm still working on finishing the whole series, but you don't even see the engine. But yet they added it, and they still have the hood open. So why didn't they do that with the DeLorean? DeLorean is still a car. It still has an engine, so why didn't they add it? But then again, if I'm not mistaken, the engine on a DeLorean is actually in the back of the car. And since there's a whole bunch of shit on the back of the car, they can't really add that. But you can still have a trunk for the hood. Herbie did it. So again, this is all just nitpicky crap. But... This is when the good stuff starts to come into place. I've realized I've been meshing it all in. The good details about this car is it definitely feels a little bit more better built than the other one. The other one is smaller, yes. Definitely lighter, but this one has working lights. Another thing I like about this, uh, like I said earlier... I love the folding in wheels. I think that is a really good thing. And if I, again, if I ever wanted to have this as a display piece, I could easily make it look like the car is flying. And then, you know, the working lights is always a good thing to have. You know, you go have a friend over and you're like, hey, man, you know, let me show you your, your shit. Your, what, do you, what do you like to do as a hobby? Oh, I like to, I like to collect uh, the die-cast cars. Cool, let me see them, bro. Then you pull out and push the button. Oh my god, man, that thing lights up. Did you do that yourself? And just to be a smart age, you're like, hell yeah, I did it myself. It took three weeks. <laughs> I've not, I'm kidding, I have never actually done that. The only time I actually did do something like that, it was a, a huge mistake. 
But and this is a, this this will go on Ultimate Deadpool extras whenever that channel gets off of the ground, um, or whenever I actually upload or anything on there. But <laughs> uh, let, let let's just say um, I got what I deserve for joking around. Um, but you know, to, again, to be fair, you're not gonna get the best detailing out of a 124th scale car. I do it only because I make sure I do because it drives me batshit crazy if I don't. So that's why all of the diecast car or all the model cars that you guys see me make and the ones that you guys see in my videos, they're all very detailed because if they're not, it drives me crazy. I kid you not, you can ask anybody in my family, I am a detail freak. If it does not look what I want it to look like, I continue to start. I continue to tinker with it and tinker with it until I either give up and start over, or until I get it right. So another good thing I like about this car is I do, however, like the 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 effect for the die for the metal. I do like the look of the stainless steel look. I do like that. There are a couple of spots where it kind of looks like it, they kind of half-assed it, like on the driver's side door, uh, a little bit on the hood, and then some on the back. They looks like they half-assed it in some spots, but all in all, they did their best. Another thing I do like about this is some of the wiring details that you see on the back end of the car. So here, I do like that detail as well. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. They did screw up the back turn light or the back lights. For instance, these these two ends here are supposed to be orange for turn signal lights. This does not have that, which is okay, but you know, you can kind of overlook it after, you know, once or twice. So, oh, also, the out of time license plate, they did that great. If I'm not mistaken, the original license plate was actually yellow, and this is white. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So, all in all, I would give this about a 7 out of 10, uh, simply because the interior is by far the most famous part of the Back to the Future time machine, and they had no detail for it. They put two stickers on the inside, the, the speed monitors and the time circuits. But the flux capacitor, SID, the actual time circuit switch, all of that is missing detail. But yet all of that detail is on the other car, and it's a lot smaller. So, all in all, I, I would definitely give have to give this at least a 7 out of 10. Um, 8, since the lights work. So, the lights do work, which I do like, but... I don't know. It's still going to appear in my videos, I'm sure. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Did you guys like this car? If you guys want one, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's on Amazon, so you know everybody has Amazon, I'm sure. Um, and if you don't have Amazon, I'm sure you can find it on other some kind of some form of the internet. Just type in Jada Diecast Back to the Future, first thing that pulls up. So, uh. That's about it for this video. I'm going to go lay down and go to sleep. Because I haven't slept in three weeks. I don't know how I'm standing up. <laughs> but I am uh, very tired. Nevertheless. So I'm going to go to bed. So peace out. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys all later. Bye.